What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Mr. Wynn. I'm going to be making, in this episode, another Japanese dish. One that is known as okonomiyaki. Kind of hard to say when you first start out, but it, uh, you eventually get used to saying it. It's easy. Uh, let me show you guys the ingredients that I'm going to be dominantly using. For this, I will be using cabbage green onion. I will be putting some pepper jack cheese in there. And that is, well, it's supposed to be okonomiyaki flour, but um, but I don't have any. So I'm using regular pancake flour, which is essentially what okonomiyaki is. Um, and so, yeah, I forgot. I need to put some eggs on it. Uh, I think it's going to be two eggs. I think I have to look at the recipe one more time. And so here's two eggs, extra large. Uh, so yeah, okonomiyaki, it's a, it's a good food. I mean, I, I don't eat it that often anymore, but back when I was a teacher in Japan, I was quite famous for being able to make it. Um, and I used to have okonomiyaki parties all the time. And so what okonomiyaki essentially is, is it's a pancake that has, and the staple ingredients are going to be the cabbage and the green onion. Uh, people put like shredded potato in there. Uh, there's this sticky potato that they'll put inside, which is really good. I don't have any. Um, but otherwise, you can kind of put whatever you want in it. Generally, in Japan, people will put seafood uh, in there. I, I, that's not really my thing. You know, they'll put like squid or octopus and fish or shrimp in there. It's not really, that's not really where I tend to go with it. I, I tend to make a very American style of okonomiyaki. I mean, for, you know, I'm putting pepper jack cheese in it. That's not Japanese. But um, but when I was a teacher in Japan, I used to I used to make a killer okonomiyaki, and I think it's because it was Americanized. I think that's why people liked it. Uh, so I will say I think that is what the draw was to my version. And so essentially, it is. It's just making a pancake that has that has stuffing in it, and it has um, you know, instead of just your normal breakfast pancake that you just put maple syrup on, and it's all good. Mm, okay, let's make this. Part of the reason why I'm making this video today, by the way, is that I can show you how to use this thing, a mandolin slicer, and I will give you guys explicit instructions on how to use it and how not to be stupid with it. You don't want to lose a limb or, or, or like an appendage while using this mandolin slicer. Very dangerous. But before we do that, let's go ahead and cut the cabbage. I will be, cu I will be cutting the cabbage in half, but I will use the mandolin slicer when I shred it into fine little bits. So I will probably cut this guy into quarters. And then I will slice him appropriately. Now, before the video, I do, I do want to promise you, before the video, I did wash my hands. Uh, I did wash my hands. Um, in fact, I, you know, I'm just going to do it again, just so that there is no doubt, there is no doubt that I am using safety when I, safety in all things when you cook. But, uh, but yeah, I, I honestly, like, I'm not, I actually don't have much variety in terms of what I make. I, I actually, I'm actually quite good at eating the same thing often. You know, like, there, there was a point in time when I was, when I got hired at Westview, and actually it was maybe, maybe a few years ago, when I was eating the exact same thing for lunch every day. I don't have a lot of variety, but I can make some things, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I do like making okonomiyaki. So what I did was I cut this thing into quarters, and then I'm gonna cut the other guy into quarters. And any leftover, I'm not gonna use the whole cabbage, but any leftover cabbage, I'll probably just make a salad out of it or something. The cabbage is pretty good. It keeps for quite a while also. Um, really good for you. Um, I don't I, I don't like eating the corner pieces. So like these little these little corner pieces, I am gonna cut those off and just chuck them. Um, but I do, I, I like cooking Japanese food. You know, uh, as, as you guys all know, I was a teacher in Japan for three years out of my life and it's quite it's quite a special time in my life so I tend to I tend to reminisce about it a lot I remember having these parts I remember making it for the first time the first time I ever had this it was at a restaurant in the city that I lived in the city known as Isasaki and yeah it was just it was a really cool place and I remember there was this there was a uh, we all we ordered all different versions I ordered like a pork kimchi one and Someone order a mochi and cheese one, and that's how I discovered the cheese version. Um, 
And then I decided to try to make it. And it was really, really fun. And I will tell you about that experience after I'm done slicing this thing. Okay, first thing, glove. Please wear a glove that is going to protect you from the blade. The blade is really sharp. If you, if, 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 if you, if, if you touch this thing, you could easily take off your finger. In fact, there were there have been reviews on Amazon on this thing, and people will show their finger almost sliced off. It's gross. Next thing, don't be a superhero. Use the guard. Protect yourself. Do not be stupid with this with this uh, with this mandolin slicer. But if you use it appropriately, you can get some pretty cool finely sliced cabbage. I'm hoping that I can get that with this thing here. So it just slices really clean. And I'm just gonna keep doing these back and forth motions and I'm going to not take my eye off the mandolin slicer as I slice this down. And I'm just gonna keep on going now. Now I'm going to stop for, actually I'll, I'll slice this whole quarter here then and then I'll show you guys what the, what the sliced quarter looks like. And it's really finely sliced. Now, when I was living in Japan, one of the coolest things, one of the best things that, that, I, that I discovered was cabbage. Uh, Gunma Prefecture, which is where I live, was known for its cabbage. And I think it's on the floor here, I apologize. Food, I don't want to waste you. Um, was known for its cabbage, and, um, and it was really good. I mean, honestly, I fell in love with eating vegetables when I was there, you know, growing up. I ate nothing but hamburgers and stuff. It was, I, I did not have a very good diet. That's why when I see you guys eating your ethnic lunches in my classroom back when we were still in school, I would, I, I sit in envy. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, but uh, I sit in envy of you guys eating your ethnic lunches because you guys are eating such good stuff. And I didn't, I didn't appreciate that kind of stuff when I was younger. I really just wanted to be, you know, you know, separate myself from my Asian heritage as much as possible. So, but not anymore. Um, let me show you what the, what the, what the cabbage looks like. It looks like this. It looks like this. Look how finely sliced that is. It's kind of cool, right? I like it. It's neat. So I am going to do that three more times, okay? Three more times. Uh, in fact, actually, as I, as I slice those, I'm going to put them in here because I am going to rinse it off. I am going to rinse it off and I'm going to, um, and then I'm going to dry it and then, and then I'll put it in the okonomiyaki. Uh, good stuff. But yeah, growing up um, was, was interesting, the things that I would eat. You know, I, I swear, I, if I could eat hamburgers every day, I probably would have grow, growing up. But, um, but now, you know, I, I, I must say, spilling cabbage everywhere. I must say, I really do appreciate Asian food. It's good. I like. I, I mean, I appreciate all food. It, all food is good. Um, you know, I feel like it's uh, it's good stuff. I like trying new new types of cuisines. But yeah, here I am, just slicing. Um, Man, it, when I was living in Japan, I didn't have a mandolin slicer. I don't even think I, don't even think I knew what this was when I was living in Japan. Um, so I would slice everything by knife, and it was fun. It, I, I didn't mind. You know, I was 23 at the time I first started eating this regularly. There are two types of okonomiyaki. I am going to be making the boring kind. Well, it's not boring. It's um, it, it's the kind that I'm more used to seeing. The kind that that I actually really like is uh, the kind that comes from Hiroshima. And, and what they do, and I, I wish I had some noodles here for that, is they, you know, in Hiroshima and Osaka, what they do is they, is they fry noodles into the okonomiyaki, into the pancake, that is. And then you get like, this nice crispy outside of the noodle, and it's super good, I remember, I just, I, I loved it. I went down to Hiroshima once, during my time in Japan, and it was such a wonderful place. I mean, I went to the dome where they, I know, uh, where the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb, and just, um, just hearing the survivor's story, I know, okay, I almost cut my thumb. Do not touch this thing. Just go one last slice, and then evacuate the last piece of, uh, the last piece of uh, cabbage right there. That was a, that was a corner end. That could have ended badly. I was about to push this thing, and if I wasn't careful, I could have gone. And then the okonomiyaki would not be vegetarian anymore. There would be a slice of thumb in there. Not good. Okay, so more uh, shredded cabbage goes into the bowl. I'm gonna rinse that off in a little bit. Oops, why am I putting it in here? I need to put it in here, into the into the bowl with the uh, with the with this. I'm being dumb. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, 
but yeah, you know, living in Japan was really neat. You know, going down to Hiroshima and, and, and meeting the bomb survivors and stuff like that, just hearing their stories of what, what it was like living in that time and what it, what it felt like for them to see an atomic bomb detonate right in front of them. The lady, um, the lady who was the survivor told me, she said that at the time she was making a spear when she saw the bomb detonate. She was making, uh, you know, she, she was making a spear that way, you know, the town could defend themselves in case, you know, the Americans dropped in and they could defend defend their, their village or stuff like that. They said that, she said that never in her lifetime did she ever envision a weapon that looked like that. Um, she believed that it was a weapon from God. She thought it was, or, or, or aliens were invading. I mean, you know, imagine a spear versus a nuke. I mean, it, not even on the same level. Um, she said that the blast hit her, and then she woke up. Um, she woke up. Yeah, I don't know how, how much time had gone by, but she woke up, and she was trying to wipe off her face, but she couldn't, because she realized that when she finally opened her eyes, her hands were missing. It was a very sad story. And so um, she ended up having to go through a lot of reconstructive surgery and such. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, war is bad, in my opinion. Um, so, not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Um, but no, Japan was such a defining part of my, my life. I mean, you guys know I talk about it all the time. It was, uh, it was a very fun time. You know, I invite Phil over, and I've talked about him, uh, extensively in this, uh, in these little episodes here. I've talked about Phil a lot. And he'd come over, we'd eat this. The first time I ever tried to make okonomiyaki, I actually ended up trying to make something different. It's a thing called monja, which is which is a more liquidy version of this. And I remember exactly when I did it. It was in the winter of my second year, and I was at home, and in my apartment, and I tried making this, and I remember I was watching a movie at the time. I remember the movie exactly. It was a movie called Signs, Crud. Um, and so, um, it was a movie called Signs. Now, if you've ever seen it, uh, it's a movie by M. Night Shyamalan. Um, it was probably his first movie, but it wasn't the movie that made him famous. That was The Sixth Sense. But Signs is a movie starring Mel Gibson, and it was kind of scary, but the ending is really stupid. Mm. In fact, I, I, in fact, I'd say it's, it's totally the, the ending is totally stupid. Um, I, I won't tell you the ending, but I can tell you that if you think really hard about about what the bad guy's weakness is, it makes you wonder why they were even on Earth to begin with. Um, anyway, it was kind of dumb. But I remember making monja, which is similar to okonomiyaki. It's just more watery. Um, and I remember, and you'll see me flip the pancake at some point. I I knew that I could make this when I when I was able to make that monja. Now, um, yeah, I'll talk about flipping the okonomiyaki when I get there. Um, I'm uh, you know at the risk of sounding arrogant, I I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at flipping. Having said that, this episode will probably be the one where I screw it up. Uh, and if I do, that's okay. I can go on blast. I don't mind. Um, I mean, you know, it's. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of fun making it. In fact, in fact, one of the things I would love to do is I would love to have an okonomiyaki party where people, where I just make the base of it, and then people put in whatever they want, and then I just, you know, in fact, I thought about doing that for the math department at one point. I, whenever we have our, our holiday parties, I'm the cook. So I thought about making okonomiyaki just the staple, and then saying, okay, guys, you can put whatever you want in there, and then I will cook it for you. I'm still thinking about doing that. I might at some point. It's uh, it's fun. Um, and I think I have way too much cabbage in here. I don't know if this thing will be able to spin, but I will, tr I will give it my best. I like this head of cabbage right here. I like how fine, I really like fine, thin cabbage. It's really good. When I go to Japanese restaurants, when I remove my glove, when I go to Japanese restaurants, um, Uh, one of the most fun things, uh, one of the best things on the menu is eating the cabbage. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like it. It's just good. 
It's good for you too. Cabbage is really good. It's really high in vitamin C and stuff like that. High in fiber. And the, oh crap! What broke the cup that Mrs. Day gave to me. Um, and so just gotta be careful when you rinse this dude off. Um, okay, well I'm gonna go and pause right here, and I'm going to rinse this thing off. You don't need to see me do that. And then I will get everything ready. And when everything's ready, I will come back. So I will see you guys in a little bit. And we are back. So I have shredded the cabbage. I rinsed it off. It's all good. Um, I have actually mixed all of the okonomiyaki powder, uh, the, the, the flour and the eggs and the water already. I didn't need you guys to watch me do that. That's pretty boring. But, uh, but before I mixed it, it looked like this. So if you notice, there's the two eggs. There's the uh, there's some water. There's the flour in there. And now after some mixing, it now looks like this. And so, a couple differences between regular pancake flour and okonomiyaki flour. I, I would say go with okonomiyaki flour. This one, the pancake flour is pretty thick, and so I I need to use a little more water than normal to uh, to, to dissipate it. Um, but the advantage is that this actually dissipated pretty quickly, so this actually could turn out pretty badly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in more cabbage than I normally do to make it thicken up. You, you don't want your okonomiyaki to be watery. That would be gross. And plus, I actually really do like having a lot of cabbage in my okonomiyaki, so once I throw the cabbage in, I'm going to start mixing it up. And like I said, I actually don't use that much of it. I'm going to, um, I'm going to throw it in like this, and then, um... And then I, I just I just keep mixing it until I have like a a texture that I like. Uh, and after this, again, I'm gonna, you know cabbage isn't the only thing I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna throw in uh, I'm gonna throw in my green onion that I have right here. And then I'm going to throw in some cheese. And then anything else, I just tend to throw in more cabbage if I if I don't feel like the consistency is thick enough. So um, of course a, a whisk might be better to use, but honestly I just I don't have one, so I'm going old school. Use chopsticks to stir it. Um, one thing that I do like to put in here also is some good old fashioned red pepper. Gives it a nice little kick to it. Now actually, I didn't do that until after I got back here. Uh, I like it nice and spicy like that. It's good stuff. I'm going to throw that in there. I'm not going to worry about stirring it just yet. Because now I'm going to, actually I'm going to move this cabbage right here. And I'm going to remove this rubber band. I'm going to rinse off my green onion. I'm going to dice down that green onion into small little pieces. I'm going to throw it in. Green onion's good. I like green onion. Green onion is good in a, in a food that, um, that I eat. Most foreigners actually hate this food. Uh, but I was dared by a Japanese teacher to eat it once. It's called natto, which is which is fermented soybean. I'm pretty sure you will all hate it. Um, but I like it. I really love it. It, it, it. it looks like snot. It tastes fermented, but it's good. When you eat it with rice, you throw some green onion in there. It's really sticky. Most people can't get past the, the, um, the sticky or the smell because it smells like, uh, it smells like nacho. That's all I can say. Um, and so, um, so some people will compare it to being smelled like it's smelling like gym socks, um, and so or, or, or like bo or something. I don't I don't think I smell it that way, but you know, everyone's different. Um, here, so here I go. I'm just, I'm just dicing up this green. Onion. I'm gonna put this whole green onion in there, and it's gonna be good. I love green onion. I used to hate onions as a kid, but after I moved to Japan, Japan really changed me in, in some ways for the better. I always say for the better. Um, and so uh, my, my, my eating palate really expands after after moving to Japan. Bam, hello green onion, get thrown in there. Whoops, don't fall chopsticks. And then I'm gonna throw the rest of these green onion. Don't drop any. I'll drop one. More, drop them in. Good stuff. And I'm gonna mix it again. I try to get every little piece in there. I try not to waste food. Not a big, I'm not big on food waste. Um, and, you know, um, okay, so let's mix this thing again. I'm going to let that knife dry because I'm going to cut some, cut some pepper jack and throw it in there. And here we go. It's starting to become thicker. And again, I'm not going to panic yet. It's a little thin, 
I think I'm gonna put too much water in there to compensate for the for the fact that I'm using regular old pancake mix. But again, anything that I any thinness that I'm experiencing right here, I can I can supplement it with more cabbage. And I have, as you can see, I've got plenty. Uh, I will probably eat, be eating cabbage salads for the next few days because of this, which I'm not complaining about. That stuff's good. Put some sesame dressing in there and eat it. It's all good. Okay, cheese. Um, all right, let's hack this thing. Um, ooh, pepper jack. Uh, hold on. Okay. okay, let's chop that bag right there. I'm gonna throw some pepper jack up in this mug. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I, I enjoy, you know, I think part of the draw for Okonomiyaki and then Nabe, like the, like one of the other episodes was, um, it, it gives me the nostalgia. You know, I, I like reminiscing about my time back in Japan, you know, um, just, I mean, apart from the fact that the job is super easy, except for singing ridiculous songs to elementary school kids. Um, it was, it was a fun, it was, it was a fun experience, you know, um, I actually was just talking to Phil not too long ago, and, um, and he's doing well, so I'm happy about that. Uh, if I go to Japan this summer, on my way to Taiwan, I will stop by to visit him, and that would be, that would be very good. Uh, he and I, we sit around, it's just like the old times, we sit around, we, we cook food, we reminisce, we talk about sociology, um, and it's like time hasn't gone by, you know, he and I, we, you know, we met when we were, when I was 22, he was 25, I am now 37, and he is 40, so we are approaching, well, I am approaching, he is, I think, in the middle age bracket. Which is, uh, which is weird, you know, yeah. Yeah, so, all right, time to cut this thing down. Now, the way I slice down this pepper jack is I just cut it into cubes. Oops, crap, uh, into little cubes. And then I just dump them in and I just stir. That's all I do. So it's pretty easy. So boom, 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 and boom. Okay, you are all sliced. Thank you for being sliced. Throw you in there and throw you guys in there. And again, this will weigh in on the, on, the, on the thickness of it, of the okonomiyaki as well. This will help add to the volume. This is like adding more rectangles into the Riman Sum, you know, the thickness of the volume as we rotate this thing about the y-axis. As you will see me rotate this thing about the y-axis. Okay, so here we go. Actually, no, it'll be multiple y-axis because I'm using two chopsticks. I'll mix it in, and then I feel like it's probably not going to be as thick as I want it to be. I can I can already kind of tell, um, and I kind of just separate the cheese pieces out a little bit. Now, if I had any, it would actually be really good if there was like some some plain mochi. I ha I have mochi, but it's flavored, so I don't want to you know mix it in here. Um, and if I had plain mochi, I would throw it in there because the actual recipe is a mochi cheese okonomiyaki, um, and um, and so that, so it, it, the mochi gives it more of a gummy kind of consistency, which is, which is good. Um, right now, mine's a little thin, so I'm gonna take another handful of this guy and say, hello, cabbage, throw you in there, and maybe just a pinch more. I'm guessing, I could be way wrong, and if I am, whoo, kinda screwed. But, uh, but actually, what's good about okonomiyaki is it's really hard to screw up, I mean, you know, you put you put stuff in there that you like, and so I don't I don't normally see it going badly, and so yeah, so here we go. It's 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 uh, it's becoming it's becoming itself, which is great. Um, and then I will eventually throw this dude on a frying pan, and so like I said, I'm just prepping it right now. I'm just prepping it and you know getting it all mixed in together, and I'll show you what the final mixed product will look like before I take a ladle of it and throw it onto a frying pan. Um, but, um, yeah, actually, you know, it could stand to use a little bit more. Uh, and I can tell because there are enough, 
places where like I guess I could say lakes of of, of batter uh, of are are forming. You don't want too many lakes of batter, you know. And when I say lakes, I mean like you know like the like you know the water. Um, you want as much mass in there as possible. You don't want so much liquid because uh, you know that's just not not how this works. Um, so, all right. I think we have a product here, you know, a little bit watery, a little bit watery, but I think that will evaporate as I cook the okonomiyaki. So let me show you guys what this looks like as a final mixed product, and then I will throw it onto a frying pan, fry it up, and then we will see how this thing goes. So here's what the, here's what the final product looks like as it's mixed. It's all mixed in there. You see how it's all messed up in there, which is good. And now from here, Got a good frying pan. I'm gonna use a small one because the large one, if you remember the uh, the tofu episode with the nabe, it sticks like crazy, and I'm not gonna risk that. So I might as well have smaller okonomiyakis and more of them. Uh, ordinarily, I've actually made way too much. It's gonna take me a few days to get through all this. Um, ordinarily, I would just call some people over, like I call maybe Mr. Hubschmidt or. Or uh, or Miss Park or 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 uh, someone else, you know, come over. They can just you know uh, hang out, eat okonomiyaki. Uh, while I'm waiting for that to heat up, I'm just going to split some of this cheese apart because if it if it's too clumped together, then it becomes uneven. Like some okonomiyakis will have a bunch of cheese, some will have none. Let's just make sure we split these guys up a little bit. There you go. Split you. Um, now, actually, this recipe is a favorite among the Westview administration. I've made this for them a few times, and they like it. Mrs. Hurd really likes it. Mrs. Ziegler loves it. And so, um, I swear to God, like these lakes just keep showing up. I'm going to dissipate you. Goodbye. Uh, I'm going to throw some more cabbage in there. Um, and so... Um, yeah, so people actually like it, so we'll see, we'll see how this one turns out. I mean, like I said, I, I used a non-Japanese flour, so hopefully it turns out okay. Uh, it's a little, it's a, like I said, it's a little watery for my taste. I think it, that's my fault. I added too much water in, uh, to the pancake mix, but we will see. All right, so once this thing gets hot, I'm going to take a ladle. Let's see, let's, let's evacuate these chopsticks here. I think that it's done being stirred. Hello? All right, so let's take a ladle, and then I'm going to, I'm going to throw some okonomiyaki onto the skillet here. Let's see. Hear that sizzle. Hear that sizzle. All right, so usually for this particular frying pan, two ladlefuls is enough, and I'm going to turn down the heat because you want it to cook on the inside, and I will use a spatula to just kind of make it circular. I'll show you what it looks like as it's frying. I'll show you what it looks like. Now, if this thing had meat on it, I actually prefer vegetarian okonomiyaki. Uh, I don't know why, it's just kind of thing you know, as, I, as I grew older. But if you throw meat on this thing, one of the things that's actually quite good is if you put like strips of bacon on it and then people will flip it and it gives a nice little crisp. So. Uh, let me show you what the uh, what the frying version of this looks like. It looks like this. Hope you can see that. Yes, it looks like that. Uh, and then, yeah, we will come back in a few minutes when um, when it's ready to be flipped. And then I will flip it, and then we will eat it. Okay, see ya. And a few minutes later, we are back. Now, we are ready to flip this okonomiyaki. So how can we tell when an okonomiyaki is ready to be flipped? Let me show you. You see how up top it's a little dry? It's looking a little dry on the uh, on the top there. Now the edges are a little crispy. So that's because my the heat was on a little too high. But that's okay. Crispy is good. I do like crispy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spatula and I'm going to kind of remove it from the frying pan, kind of. I should do that. That way you guys don't. I'm describing you guys are looking at my face. Okay. So normally, normally this is meant to be done with two spatulas. I'm gonna try it with one. I'm gonna try it with one because I'm holding the iPad. One, two, three, go. Boom. 
Success. I did it. Good job, me. Now again, it's a little, it's a little crispy, it's a little burnt, but it's okay. Uh, a little bit burnt is not a big deal. Um, and then we'll just let it cook. Uh, it's almost done. Um, and and now, oh crap! Oh, I shouldn't have done that. But that's okay. Oh no, that's okay. Ooh, thank goodness for nonstick. I'm gonna move this dude. So I will probably make a couple more. Uh, yeah, cabbage. Good. I will eat that later. Um, I'm gonna get a plate for that thing. Three toppings go on top of okonomiyaki. And they're all good. Okonomiyaki sauce. It's good stuff. Japanese mayonnaise. This is not best foods. It's really, really good. And then, furikake. Now, I bought this from Trader Joe's, but it's still good. Um, and mm, it's basically like a seaweed, uh, seaweed and sesame uh, sesame seed mix, uh, a little bit of salt, yeah, it's good stuff. All right, so let's check on the status of our okonomiyaki here, and it's, it's looking pretty good, it's looking pretty good. Um, while that's happening, I'll go and put this dude in the sink, I will put my oil back up here, whoa, did a piece of cabbage just fall off the thing? I'll put my dishes in here to wash, it is trash day for me, so I will get ready to take out the garbage. Um, you know, I will be like Mr. Anderson, except I will take my own garbage out. I will not help my landlady carry out her garbage. Um, okay. Let's hit this thing. Let's hit this thing here. All right, I think this thing is ready to rock and roll, so take you off the plate right there, off the uh, pan. And now, ordinarily, what I do is, that is a hot sensation right there, is I will actually, you know what, I'm going to put him on this, on this, um, on this cutting board right here. I'll take a pizza cutter, I'll cut him into eights. So, one, two cuts. And so it's just like pizza, you know, it's kind of like pizza, I use a pizza cutter on it. That's three cuts, and that's four cuts right there. Four cuts on either side give me eight total slices. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put him back on this plate and then I'm going to top him with sauce uh, if I can do this. So let's get some let's get some gravity on my side here. Let's uh no you know what no I'm not gonna be a superhero forget that. So there like that the other half goes on like this. Okay I can tell you right now it is not going to be like regular okonomiyaki. I can just tell the flour is off. But it's okay. Right, it's not a big deal. Um, the, the taste, I'm sure, is going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to use this. Oh, crap. And I'm going to move you in. I suppose I could have let the other side cook for just a little bit longer, but this video is already kind of running a little bit long. I like to create a spiral. It's up to you guys. I mean, honestly, the word okonomiyaki actually is derived from two Japanese words. The word okonomi means as you like it. And... The word yaki means fried, and so um, or cooked. Forget, I think it's fried. And so, um, so yeah, you can kind of make this as you like it, and um, you know, and, and put the things that you like in it. And so, I'm not a huge, and, and although Japanese mayonnaise is better than best foods by a long shot, I don't, I don't overload. I'm not like, I'm, I'm not going to join a mayonnaise eating contest with, you know, um, with Japanese mayonnaise or none of that. And then I sprinkle some foodie kake on there, which is, you know, the seaweed. Seaweed um, sesame mix, and got a fork. Uh, okay. And without further ado, here it is. This is okonomiyaki right here, and I can smell it. It smells pretty good. Uh, I'm going to grab another set of chopsticks here. Um, where's your Where's your brother chopstick? Where'd you go? Oh, you're right here. Got it. Okay. Arg. Get over here. Okay. Gotta unleash my inner scorpion on that one. All right. Here we go. Let's try the okonomiyaki with American pancake flour. Let's try this out. Mm. Bottoms up.
Yeah, it tastes the same. So it's, it's just the consistency that's different. It tastes the same using pancake flour. However, I do think you should use the use the Japanese flour. It makes it gives it a more authentic kind of feel. But that's okonomiyaki. You can get it at a, at a Japanese restaurant. You can make your own. You can get it at a Japanese festival. The summer festivals are going on. Um, well, actually, they probably aren't going on right now because of social distancing. But um, but they're actually doing pretty good with containment. So they might be happening this summer. Pretty easy to make. I highly recommend it. It's really good. Uh, as always, uh, leave comments or questions in the comments area, and I will see you all in the next episode.